Oh
official call to worship, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us now have our invocation of meditation. Thank each of you this morning for tuning in to uh, Bethesda Baptist Church as we broadcast our service on Facebook Live. And for those of you who uh, had an opportunity last week to come out and celebrate our pastor's 38th anniversary on behalf of the church body, I want to thank you so much for making that day uh, such a special day for our pastor and our first lady. And so we are grateful for Dr. Carter's 38 years of service here in the church we call Bethsaida, the church beside the road that lights the path of men. And we are grateful for this opportunity. I am grateful for this, uh, this privilege, this opportunity to stand in Dr. Carter's stead today as he has taken some time, much needed time off. And so, so we uh, will now uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for our morning worship service.
Let's pray. Gracious God, how we thank thee for another blessed Lord's day. Thank you, O Lord, for looking beyond even at our faults, seeing yet supplying our very needs. Father, we call on thee because there is no other name uh, given uh, among men uh, that we must be saved. And so, Father, we thank you for your loving son, Jesus. We thank you for his life, his, his, his death, his burial and resurrection. We thank you, Father, for redeeming us through the blood of thy son, Jesus. And so now, Father, we pray a prayer upon this land and country. We pray, pray a prayer not just on our land and country, but on every country. Father God, in this world, we pray for the leaders and we pray Father God, for those who find themselves today in a situation of food insecurity, uh, we pray for those, Father God, who finds themselves today on a bed of affliction. And we pray, Father, for all of those medical professionals who are taking the time to give comfort and to supply the, what's needed uh, to grant uh, recovery time and care. Uh, to these, your people. And so, Father God, we, uh, we now turn to your holy word. And we ask, Father God, that you will bless this worship service. Father, we ask that uh, it be, everything be done decently and in order. And Father, without any fear or contradiction, we'll keep right on giving you the honor and praise that's due to thee and thee alone. We ask this prayer, O Lord, in thy son Jesus' name, and the people of God said, Amen.
turn with me, turn with me into the book of Hebrews, book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, commencing with verse number one and concluding with verse number two, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Commencing with verse number one and concluding with verse number two. Hebrews 12 and one, thus the reading of God's eternal word. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thus ending the reading of God's word. Verse number two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. This morning for a few minutes, I would like to talk with you from this topic, a declaration of dependence. Jesus the Christ is the source of our faith, a declaration of dependence. Not independence, but a declaration of dependence. Jesus the Christ is the source of our faith. My brothers and sisters, like you, I too have heard that the church has lost its relevancy. The church that Jesus Christ established by his blood has lost its relevancy. I believe we live in a era where instant gratification has pushed reason out of the window. And my brothers and sisters, as we look at our world today, we see uh, the reality of trouble. Trouble is on every side. Uh, if you look to the left, trouble is there. If you look to the right, trouble is present. If you look behind you, trouble is is approaching. If you look forward, trouble has just passed you by. And so this morning, I want to encourage the people of God to look unto Jesus, who is the source of the very faith that we believe in. My brothers and sisters, the reality that trouble is present and that our lives wait in the balance. James says in James 1 and 2 and 3, he says that count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Someone may ask the question this morning, uh, what is divers or what are divers temptations? As Dr. Carter would say, I'm glad you asked because I am dying uh, to tell you. Diverse temptations are various trials. James goes on to say, knowing this, that we must understand that those trials work in us, birth out patience, and we must let patience have her perfect work. Maybe that's not enough for you today. 
I would like for you to follow me down to 1 Peter 4 and 12. And Peter instructs us to look at the fiery darts, not to be confounded because the fiery darts of this world are coming against us. As if something strange is happening. Well, you've heard what James had to say. You've heard what Peter had to say, and you're still not convinced. Well, let's listen to what Jesus say over in John in the 14th chapter, verse number 27. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world give it, but as I give it. There's no need for us to be fearful what man can do. We need to be fearful of the one who has the ability to impact the body and the soul. And so this morning, uh, I, I, was, I was considering what is it that God would have me to say to his people, surrounded by a world of trouble. The 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews comes in and first gives us a catalog of witnesses who have passed and ran the race of faith. And then verse two tells us after we are after we have run the race or as we are running the race, we need to look and stay focused on him who is named Jesus, the author and finisher of our very faith. My brothers, I, I, I want, to know, want you to know that I understand that the world presents questions to us. And, and, I, and I realize that some of you find yourself questioning your faith. And I, too, I must admit, be honest with you, that circumstances sometimes will hit us so hard that it will bring us to our very knees. And so I ask you this morning to to, to stop whatever you're doing and, and ask God to show you what is it uh, that he will have you to do to impact uh, this world that is no friend to grace. Let us look at our first verse. Uh, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And what I love about this verse, it talks about these witnesses. And these witnesses can be found in the 11th chapter. We see Noah and we see Abraham and Joseph and Sarah. We see uh, the patriarchs there, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And we also see Noah during his time how the Bible tells us how he was faithful to God. And we understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. Uh, we get Noah here in this particular book, uh, around the seventh verse, and said, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen, as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. We see even Noah, a man in a time that God has described as every man, even from his youth, was thinking evil. And God decided to send a flood. It would have been God's right to destroy the world. But his grace and mercy allowed one man and his family to be saved. I like this because it tells me that the just shall live by faith. And this morning, I want to encourage you this morning to understand that sometimes we will stand by ourselves. We must believe in him because we know that Hebrews 11 and 6 says first, in order for us to have a relationship, we must come to him by faith. And God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Maybe that's not enough for you this morning. Let us look at Abraham. 
God called him out of Mesopotamia, Ur of the Chaldees at 75 years old. And God promised him that he would make him make out, make out of him a great nation. God promised him that his seed would be as the sand of the sea or would be as the stars in the sky. 75 years old. And he waited and he waited for that promised seed. 25 years before Isaac was born. My brothers and sisters, you and I may not live to see some of the promises that God has grant has grant to us. We may not be able to live. We may not be able to see. I'm sorry. We may not be, we may not be able to see some of those promises that God has made. But you can take it to the bank every day of the week and twice on Sunday that the God that we serve is a God of a promise keeping God. Maybe that's not enough for you. You've heard what Noah had to say. You've heard what Abram, Abraham had to say. Let us look at Moses as Moses, the great deliverer of the people of Israel. Moses at uh, 80 years old goes back and tells Pharaoh to let my people go. He goes in 10 plagues later. The children of Israel are marching toward the wilderness with the Egyptian army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them. Caught between a rock and a hard place. Too much water to drink, not enough weapons to fight. So Moses does the only thing he knows to do to stretch forth his staff and call on the name that is above every name. God parts the waters to the Red Sea and the children of Israel walk across just like your highway. 20, 75, 65, 64. He walk across on dry land. What a mighty God we serve. And also the enemies are engulfed in the Red Sea. What a God that we serve. What I'm trying to say this morning, my brothers and my sisters, is that it is by faith that the worlds were formed. It is by faith that we believe that Jesus is coming back. It is by faith that each and every Sunday morning you tune in to watch what the word of God has to say to you. It's by faith that you get up and go to work despite the coronavirus. It's by faith that you get up and you put, you put your life back in order despite the chaos that we live in. It is by faith that we move and live and have our being. But not just faith in ourselves, but faith in the one that is named Jesus. My brothers and my sisters this morning, life has a way of presenting questions to us that would challenge our very beliefs. And I want you to know you're not the only person that have questions. Look at what the text tells us. If we look back at 12, verse number two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. Do you recall Jesus being questioned by Nicodemus? He, he, he said, how is it that a man could, could, could go back into his mother's womb when, when he's old. And, and Jesus explains to Nicodemus that you must be born again. And, and, and Nicodemus is confounded. Nicodemus is a teacher uh, of the law. But yet and still he finds it confusing. My brothers and sisters, sometimes people ask questions so they can taunt their intellectual superiority. Sometimes the questions that are asked of us are not to seek Jesus, but only used as a way, a, mean to, a means of attacking our very faith. So what do we do? What do we do when we are presented with a question that seems to be logical? We, 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 we try, like Peter says, we, we, we try to give a, a, a soft answer for the faith we have in Christ. And sometimes, no matter how many answers you provide to the question, it's not enough. What do you do when the faith that you have, it starts to falter? 
What, what do you do when the hope you have turned to hopelessness? You look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's what you do. As an illustration, I like to think about a question a young man once asked me during a youth Bible study here at Bethsaida. We were presenting our young people with an introduction to the Bible. And this young man said to me, right as we got started, said in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And he presented this, what I consider to be a profound question, a profound statement. He said, well, Reverend Wilson, God didn't create the cell phone. And I looked with puzzlement. I looked with bewilderment. I said, wow, where did that question come from? Well, apparently a friend of his has said that God didn't create the cell phone. And so what I did was what any minister or, 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 or Christian would do, we would seek an answer, not from ourselves, but from the Bible. And so I asked this young man, I said, well, I said, turn with me, the whole class, turn with me to the book of John. And so as we begin to turn, you can turn today in your Bibles. Come on along with me. Let me have a little lesson here. Turn with me to the book of John. In the first chapter of the book of John, it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Well, that's not exactly what I was looking for. And I said, well, verse two says the same was in the beginning with God. Mm, that's not what I'm looking for. I keep reading it. Finally, verse number three says, all things were made by him and without him was anything, not anything made that was made. The reaction from this young man uh, said it all. He was so excited. He said, I need to run and tell my friend that I, I got the answer. But, but, but Christians, I must inform you that that is not the correct way that we do business because see we're not in a boxing match with those that don't believe what we're trying to do we're trying to present our lord and savior in a manner that is receptive and even though they may not accept it it is the truth and so we begin to look at this and i said let's turn back to genesis 1 we turn back to genesis 1 and we find that in the beginning god created the heavens and earth and so even the material that is taken to make cell phones, even the materials that are taken to make our cars, even the materials that are taken to make our houses, even the materials that are taken to make our clothes, even the materials that are taken to make textbooks for our children, those materials come up out of the ground. Now, if you can make some ground, you in some business. We know that God created this world and everything therein. We understand that he put the seas in their places. And we understand he put the sky in this place and it's still there. The sun has been shining since creation story. And so my brothers and sisters, despite what's going on in our world, despite the difficulties that we face, despite the questions that are presented to you to trip you up, I know that Jesus is able to do anything but fail. And maybe this message this morning is not what you was, not exactly what you was expecting, but I hope it's what you need. To get out of this word today that Jesus is the source of our faith, not ourselves, but the source of our very faith. And as I think back, think back as I proceed to, uh, to try to close my message, I think back in the book of Ephesians, how Paul tells us that we, 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 we in verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 12, he tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but we wrestle against those principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And when you look at that, you talk about intellectual uh, uh, we talk about intellectual darkness because there are some people that are more that are a whole lot smarter than I am. There are a whole lot of people that are whole, that are a whole lot smarter than you are. So don't think you can convince somebody to love Jesus by being intellectual. It has to be by faith. 
It is by faith, my brothers and sisters. And when they don't believe, you have to pray for them and move on. Because somebody may plant the seed, another person may water, but only God can give the increase. So when we're wrestling with this evil spirit, we're not giving up on our brothers and sisters. No, 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 not at all. But what we're doing is we're turning them over to the hand of God. You may ask the question this morning, Reverend Wilson, why is it that you're so confident that, that, that by faith Jesus is able to do anything by, but fail? Well, I understand that it's because he lives that I can face tomorrow. It's because he lived. All my fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth living because he lived. He went to a hill called Calvary. And on that hill, they stretched him wide. They nailed nails in his hands and pierced him in his side. And what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Talking about having faith when people are trying and trying to kill you. That's faith. He died right there on Calvary. But you know he stayed dead all day Friday night and all day Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, my Lord and your Savior got up out the grave with all power, all power, all power in his hand. And for that, we say thank you, God, for raising Jesus the Christ. And it's by faith, my brothers and sisters. It is by faith. It is by faith that we respond with the expectation that the word will do the work. Don't try to be intellectual with people who are not willing to receive it. Pray for them. Pray for them. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you this morning, Beseda, for tuning in and uh, all of you who are uh, fr friends of Beseda, we extend a, uh, a, a, a arm of love around you. We can't touch you, but I send virtual hugs out to all of you. Thank you for your support for this ministry uh, as we endeavor to uh, touch the hearts of people in this community. So now we, we ask uh, that we will uh, that our church family will uh, acknowledge those of us, those members who are sick and shut in. We know that there are several on the list, and then there are a few uh, that we mention quite, uh, quite often, Sister Shelby uh, and Sister Peggy Prentice. We know that those two uh, have been on our sick list, but we are grateful to God that Sister Prentice is home and that she is doing well. She has been attending our Bible study and praise the Lord when God does something wonderful for you and restore you to health. Come on back and fellowship with your people. And so we want to also send a, our condolences out to our very own Sister Teresa Bates in the home going of her sister. And we, we, we realize that uh, death right now, uh, death is always tough. Death is always tough. But even now when we, we don't have the opportunity to properly say our goodbyes, and so it's been difficult for a lot of Beseda members who've lost loved ones during this time. During this time. And so for that, uh, Sister Bates, we love you. And uh, we can't wait uh, to have an opportunity to embrace you and to tell you how much uh, we, we love you in person. And also there are a few announcements, other announcements that I would like to give. Uh, this is our faith-based weekend and also want to make sure uh, that uh, you and I will take the time to make sure that you uh, complete your census form. It is so important uh, because these these are how dollars come back into our neighborhood. They help our schools. They supply our uh, EMT services. They supply fire uh, departments and all of the city services and resources that we need. We need you to complete your census form. And during this faith based weekend, we ask that you to stand tall and complete your form. And also, as we uh, as we pretend, as we pre uh, prepare to sign off, I want to say just one more thing about the church and its uh, proposal to reopen uh, Bethesda Baptist Church. As of today, uh, there is no uh, there's no estimated time uh, for the church to be open. Pastor Carter had mentioned. Uh, the possibility of maybe around mid-August, but that would be based on what uh, what the what the circumstances of the virus is and how the administration of the church will uh, we know will proceed with that. So just stay tuned. To all my young people, I have missed you. I have missed you. I have missed you. You know, I love to sing our song. I know I can be what I want to be. You know, and I know you can be what you want to be, but I ask that. Uh, you be patient and I ask that you make sure that you are doing everything you can to support your parents. Study, study your Bible, read your Bible every day. And if you have not signed up for the daily text from God, please ask your parent uh, to, to, to sign up for you. And you get that daily text from God and we make sure that you stay plugged in to the church. And I want you to understand how much we love you, how much we miss you. And we are praying for you. We are praying for you because we love you. And with that being said, thank you so much again for watching uh, Beseda Live uh, on Facebook. To God be the glory. Amen.